Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to another live stream. In today's live stream, we're going to be talking about safety out here in Mexico. Because I know that that's a, a big concern with a lot of people out there that, uh, you know, are thinking about moving out here to Mexico or want to, want to live out here in Mexico. So that's what we're going to be talking about today in this episode. So before we get started, you already know how we do on live streams we don't get started a right away i try to kind of give a few minutes uh so that everybody can get the notification or uh you know get in their seats or you know get, get ready to join us so that we can uh, uh do this live and everybody out there um you know can be here uh you know with us live <laughs> while we do this together again this is live you know so anything can happen at any moment's time and it's just uh kind of random but in today's episode, one thing that we are going to do is I am going to be taking a few more questions from you guys out there in the audience um, because I feel like, uh, well, this is something that a lot of you guys are concerned with in one shape, form or another. So uh, please feel free to join in and um, ask me and Lambo uh, what, you know, uh, if you have any questions or any concerns about safety out here in Mexico. Now, you know. For me, you know, I've been living out here um, six years. You know, it's, it hasn't been six years yet. We're almost at six years. In uh, June, it's going to be six years. And in fact, I see the first comment is, uh, you know, saying, Hi, is it possible that because of all the elections soon? And I don't know what you mean by is it possible. I mean, you know, the question, the title of today's episode is how safe is Mexico? Okay. It's not that it's getting more dangerous or anything like that that's that's not what the topic is it's just basically talking about the 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 topic of uh safety and um for many people in the audience they think that well mexico is extremely dangerous in fact i was looking through uh instagram you know uh tiktok whatever you know it, it, by the way tiktok is for young folks and you know adults watch Instagram reels, okay? Just a little little joke there. But in, in on Instagram, I saw, um, I was watching a post, you know, talking about gentrification out here in Mexico. You know, that's another hot topic that we'll be talking about soon. Um, and a lot of, and, so, and, and a Mexican wrote in the comments, man, I wish, you know, I wish that the rest of the world, you know, goes back. I said, I said, sorry, I'm trying to translate it. Anyways, uh, the comment was basically saying, I miss the days when the rest of the world thought that Mexico was dangerous <laughs> because that's that's how safe things are getting out here in Mexico and how the perception of what Mexico really is and uh, the safety issues out here in Mexico, how all that's changed. Now, you know, there's been a lot of things that have changed in this country, um, which is an, a main reason why uh, it's you know becoming safer out here more and more every day. Um, while, you know, just like in the USA, for example, things are getting more dangerous every day. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, basically uh, political issues, you know, in the sense of like, you know, how, you know, um, certain, you know, political parties or certain, you know, um, things that are happening politically in the sense of like economically or, you know, um, how do I say is it? Not, and I'm not talking about, you know, for example, the, the regime that's in power now. It's, you know, a lot of these things are systemic and they've been going on for a long time. OK, so by the way, because I'm not trying to pick a side here, you know, uh, blue, red, purple, yellow, orange. I don't give a crap. I don't live there anymore. And to me, they're all the same. OK, but hey, that's not what we're talking about here. And I'm not, uh, you know, trying to trigger any one of you guys more than I already triggered you guys, you know, with uh, the things that I talk about here on this channel. We're talking about safety in Mexico and how things have changed as it comes to safety in Mexico, where, well, you know, for the whole time that I've been here, the whole six years that I've been here, I've always felt extremely safe. In fact, you know, compared to life in the USA, I've never felt safer. You know, I've actually felt more safe in Mexico, <laughs> believe it or not, than uh, back in the USA. In the USA, I was always paranoid um, that danger could be lurking at any moment's notice, you know, uh, from, from all kinds of random things, you know, just hiding behind a tree, behind a corner. It was just always there. Danger was always imminent. 
we're out here in Mexico, it, it couldn't be any further from the truth. You know, uh, again, I feel very safe and I've been to many parts of Mexico and not just me, uh, other YouTubers and some of you guys even as well have traveled out here to Mexico and you know that Mexico is a lot safer these days. So like I said, in today's episode, we're going to do a little bit more of uh, the chat interaction. So if you guys have any questions or concerns about safety, please let me know and uh, we'll get deeper into it. Okay. Um, it's a real quick shout out to O and Keith and uh, Amy and Blanca and Henry and Steve and Goldfish and Evencia, right? I hope I said it right. Sorry if I mispronounced someone, someone's name out there. Stanley and uh, and everyone else. Okay, Virgilio. All right, let me see. Uh, any comments? Amy says, lived here for over three years in three different states. I feel quite safe as a single middle-aged female Things happen everywhere. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. You know, there's always, you know, going to be crime. There's always going to be all, you know, danger, you know, no matter where you are on planet Earth. There's no, uh, you know, safe that's, there's no place that's 1000% safe. Um, but if you're coming from the USA, especially a major US city these days, if you're coming from anywhere on the East Coast, you know, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, um, I can go on and on. Okay. Chicago. Um, many places in Ohio, Florida, uh, <laughs> you know, um, many, you know, Los Angeles, you know, in, uh, in California or not just, not just Los Angeles, but, you know, have you ever been to Fresno? Have you ever been to Bak Bakersfield? Have you ever been to some of these other places? Um, same as Seattle. You know, I lived in Seattle for, you know, f almost five years. And, uh, you know, when I first got there, it was pretty safe. And nowadays it doesn't look that safe at all. And, um, and that can go on and on, you know what I mean? You know, like, you know, you, I'm sure you guys can maybe let me know in the chat or later on in the comment section, you know, about where you live and how dangerous it is where you live. And if you are in Mexico, well, how safe it is in, in your area, in your neck of the woods. Or if you are in Mexico and uh, you feel danger, you know, or you've seen, you know, any, any kind of violence or any kind of danger situation or you don't feel safe in Mexico, please let us know in the chat in the comment section let's have an open discussion about this because a lot of times when people complain about you know safety in mexico it's petty crime and uh you know in the usa it's you know you know more hard crimes you know basically if someone's going to steal your wallet in the usa they're probably going to steal your life out here you know they're just going to steal your wallet if that you know steal your phone if that okay and that's about it you know nothing crazy you know, just basically low level crimes at best. All right. In fact, you know, the running joke is that, you know, the, the biggest safety issues, you know, with Mexico are, you know, broken sidewalks, <laughs> you know, um, all kinds of weird elevations when you're walking about, um, you know, again, tripping, you know, falling, uh, potholes, you know, uh, other drivers, you know, you know, other safety issues that have nothing to do with danger per se, you know, nothing to do with uh, um, crime. Uh, let me see. Blanca says, I ido algunas cinco veces. Solos mis hijas se siente más segura que en esta. Okay, so, um, so yeah, Blanca has been, you know, five times um, with her daughters and she feels a lot safer here than in the United States. Um, Henry says, um, I keep hearing how safe Merida is planning to go visit Merida this year. Yeah. So Merida, Yucatan, which is where I live is supposed to be one of the safest, if not the safest place, you know, in all of uh, Mexico and one of the safest places in, in the Americas. I just came from Guadalajara and I felt extremely safe. Sure. There was a few spots like in downtown you know certain areas that you know were very populated um there was kind of touristy in a sense you know but but off the beaten path where yeah you know you you know not that i felt not that we felt dangerous but you know me coming from miami coming from a major city you know i'm always with my spidey sense you know always kind of like uh you know you know uh what is it like looking around everywhere um you know using that situational awareness and all that good stuff and so one time, just one time, I saw that uh, we were just taking some pictures by one of the cathedrals, you know, again, in a place that was a little bit off the beaten path. And I saw somebody that was trying to approach us, basically to pickpocket or something like that. But, you know, the minute that I was aware of, you know, that person that was approaching us and acting a little weird, you know, um, that person 
immediately backed off and uh, went to go find another victim. So, you know, again, it wasn't even anything like they're going to do anything blatant, you know, any kind of crime, you know, that is going to cause any alarm. Because, again, I don't know if you've seen the police, you know, or, you know, the authority figures out here in Mexico, but they're heavily armed and they're here to protect, you know, uh, citizens and uh, their actual um public servants and all that good stuff so um not only did i see it but i've heard it many times that even if petty crimes happen even if little crimes happen or especially crimes in tourist heavy areas um yeah that immediately the police you know react you know they got cameras everywhere they go catch the culprit they got plenty of police or military or national guard all over the place protecting the citizens and if there's any kind of crime or any kind of disturbance happens they immediately you know are able to find locate and recover you know whatever it is was taken and again this is mainly in heavily trafficked touristy areas or heavily trafficked areas um but in the other parts and i mean just regular other parts yeah just basically kind of keeping an eye out and being a little extra vigilant was plenty to keep people away Whereas, you know, you're in the USA and you're walking down basically any street and you might see some drug addicts or bums or, you know, people on the street, you know, they're going to attack you. All right. You know, or they're going to try to, you know, be very aggressive to try to get something off of you, even if there are cops around. OK, so, you know, very different. You can't even compare one with the other. Um, I, I, like I said, you know, especially in the last years that I was in the USA before I moved out here, it was extremely shaky you know extremely shady you know when it came to uh safety and uh you know how dangerous things were in the usa and the ability for authorities to you know basically um you know squash or extinguish any kind of uh situation in fact you know you see it all the time you know um where the police or authority in the usa they're going after you know regular citizens you know over a broken taillight or over insulting somebody or whatever it is you know and uh you know basically hitting you with over over the head with a long arm of the law um and then people that are actually doing real crimes you know real real horrible crimes you know they're they're basically you know they're not even getting a, a slap on the wrist all right so and that's the usa you know and, and mexico is the complete opposite um if NCS says, uh, Mexico is safe, period. I was there for more than six months alone. I did Tulum, um, PDC, Merida, Puebla, and it was great. Um, Blanca, Blanca Rodriguez says, um, I am moving to Merida this May. I can't wait to move. No more U.S. for me now in Orlando, Florida, and living, living costs here is crazy. I'm sure that not just the cost of living, but again, I've even heard that Orlando, you know, Disney World, okay? The land of magic, right? Or whatever. Uh, even that place is getting pretty shaky, pretty dangerous out there too. Amy says, yeah, Merida is not safe from heat stroke. That is 100% true. That is, uh, you are, you know, you know, what is it? Like 100%, uh, that's true. Bruh. Hold on, there <laughs> it gets really hot out here. In fact, right now, it's like 110 degrees out there. And um, again, that, that's really like the, the safety issues you, you would have to worry about um, in this part of Mexico. Not all parts of Mexico. In Guadalajara, it's basically spring all year round. Same as Puebla, Mexico City. Some of these areas in the Central Valley. Um, very nice weather, so you don't have to really worry about heat stroke. But if you're in the northern parts of Mexico, in the desert yes it's very hot there as you know it's gonna be pretty obvious and same here where i live in media yucatan which i'm here in the jungle you know so you gotta definitely uh you know keep the air conditioner on fans on drink a lot of water liquids you know drink things like uh you know electrolyte you know or it, it, electrolyte electrolyte whatever is like pedialyte a lot of people drink that out here not, not many people drink gatorade or powerade or things like that because this is water and sugar they rather just drink coca-cola <laughs> if they're gonna drink water and sugar or some other sugary soda drink um when people are trying to rehydrate themselves they drink this thing called electrolyte well you've seen it in some of my episodes as i've walked around merida in 100 degree heat um, and you see me chugging those things down because, you know, they're full of, uh, you know, all the vitamins and minerals that you lose when you sweat a lot. So, you know, speaking of which, let me drink some water here. I 
Let me see. All right, so let me read some comments here. So by the way, if you if you sent me a comment in the chat and I did not get to read it uh, because, you know, obviously a lot of people are chatting, I just send it again and I'll try to get to it. Again, today's episode, we're going to do a little bit more of a interaction with the chat because I know this is a hot topic that I've talked about multiple times. And the reality is, is that, you know, for me, I feel it's a lot safer in Mexico these days than it is in the USA. And, you know, again, the proof is in the pudding. You know, you, you get to see it not just in my videos, um, but for people that have come to visit Mexico, you guys have seen it with your, your own eyes. You guys have experienced it yourself. Also, you know, the way that the U.S. is, you know, these days, basically, it doesn't matter where, basically any other place but the U.S.A. is a lot safer. That whole image or idea that the U.S.A. is the safest place, you know, in the world is, you know, non-existent these days. Now... Of course, you know, there are plenty of places in the world that are way more dangerous than anything in the USA. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about Mexico to the USA. And when we're just comparing, you know, public safety, you know, the safety of regular citizens like you and me. Yeah, no way, Jose. You know what I mean? Are you kidding me? It's a lot safer here um, than it is over there. Because, again, there's, you know, many, you know, uh, there are many, um, how do I say this? Um safety concerns and issues in the usa i mean let's not get too deep into it but just to police themselves and i mean uh, uh for a lot of people in the usa uh the danger is just the police you know the police violence against citizens um the police abuse you know just the way that the police conduct themselves in the usa uh, they have zero training whatsoever and they're told to shoot first ask questions later where that's, you know, you'll never see something like that in, the, in Mexico. In fact, I, I don't think I've ever really seen the police or any kind of authority figure here ever shoot their gun or pull out their gun to use it. Unless, you know, they are in a gunfight with the cartel in the middle of nowhere. That's it. You know what I mean? They're, they're not, you know, they're not having cartel wars, you know, in the middle of a public area or in, in any kind of... Uh, you know, public space. It just doesn't happen. It's just not a not a thing. Now, of course, you know, there are there have been cases, you know, that of things like that happening, but they're very rare. Um in the USA these days, you know, you'll go to a place like uh is it Nashville? I don't know. Anyways, Nashville, South Chicago, whatever, where there are gunfights every day as if it's you know the war in Afghanistan. You know, in fact, South Chicago is called Chirac. You know, like Shy Town, Iraq, whatever. Um, so yeah, no, you kidding me? You know what I mean? You're not, you're not going to see anything like that here in Mexico, e even in areas that are extremely violent. Um, and these areas, by the way, these areas in Mexico that are extremely violent, and they might have a lot of cartel action or you know cartel wars or whatever it is. It, it, trust me, none of us are there. None of us are going to be there. They're not affecting any of us. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not even anywhere close to any of that. Even when you're traveling through the roads many, many times, you're going to be traveling on toll roads, which are federally, federally protected roads, okay, with National Guard and all kinds of things. And, you know, any kind of these, you know, cartel wars or wars, you know, uh, between the military and the cartels, they do not spill over, you know, to any of these areas. So you're not going to see them. And many times when, uh, you know, again, like the cartel or any kind of dangerous, you know, aspects, you know, of Mexico are you know, infringing upon the rights or, you know, the people that live here, it's in the rural areas, you know, like the cartel taking over a avocado farm, for example, so that they can sell the avocados, all right, <laughs> you know, things like that, um, the, you know, the cartel, for the most part, that are in major cities, you know, they're the ones that own, you know, the Citibank building, all right, or your favorite pizza place, or the real estate, you know, business, or whatever it is, you know, they're actual businessmen, you know, just like the mafia was in the USA. So, it, it, you know, no cartel is going to go out there and kidnap your dumb ass, all right, to take your social security check, all right? No way. <laughs> this is not going to happen. So, you know, for anyone out there that still thinks that, you know, there's kidnappings or any kind of like you know, horrible, um, you know, crime, you know, upon tourists or foreigners or people, you know, just random people. No, it just doesn't happen out here. That happens in the USA all the time. So maybe if you're coming from the USA, you might be projecting because in the USA, people do get kidnapped all the time by the police for, for random things. 
okay? They do get held for ransom by the police and government agencies all the time, all right? For their check, okay? Um, and I could go on and on, you know what I mean? So public safety is at a minimum in the USA these days, and uh, most people are afraid of everything and everyone um, where in Mexico, it, it couldn't be any further from the truth. You know, more, more and more people uh, feel safer each and every day out here in Mexico. Because, um, again, I don't, I don't know if it had anything to do with um, this last... Uh, by the way, we're about to hit political elections here in June. You know, the, the, the new elections for the new president and, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, governor races and uh, all kinds of elections are around the whole country of Mexico. Um, and so we don't know if things are going to change one way or the other. But I, I think that the last president, a lot of people were uh, criticizing him because he was hands off when it came to dealing with the cartel. And he was basically putting more money into the National Guard, the police, the army and all this other stuff to basically just protect the citizens and the people and uh, the interest of the country, you know, um, more um, than anything else. Instead of fighting them, they were just basically kind of, you know, putting a little safety bubble net over the rest of the country and the rest of the people and letting the cartels do their thing. And um, I suspect that um, that's going to continue going forward. All right. So. And, and, and so when uh, things like cartels out here are fighting against each other, they're basically fighting over territory. They're fighting over resources. They're fighting over um, wanting to sell you the avocados. All right. So basically they're fighting with each other so that they can be in charge of avocados or insurance or pizza or whatever it is they're selling so that they can just sell it to you. That's all they're concerned about. OK, they're not concerned with, you know trying to shake you down for money or anything like that the only ones that are going to be shaking you down for money are corrupt police in certain aspects or parts of mexico but that's it so um steve says i know mota is legal but to use to use but is it going to be legal to buy and sell i don't know yet we don't know um we gotta at this point we gotta wait for the new president so, you know what? I, I completely forgot that it's about to be 420, you know? And since it's uh, going to be that in a couple days, and a lot of people are going to be celebrating that, and I usually talk about that, you know, every year, um, we're just going to kind of briefly touch on that real quick. But at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to, you know, smoking the herbs, um, it, it is legal, okay? Herbs, you know, Mary, Mary, Mary Jane, you know, MJ, you know, I'm trying to, you know, avoid the topic here and talk about it because, you know, the YouTube algorithm doesn't like it and I'm trying to stay monetized here. OK, so that I can provide more information for all of you guys out there in the audience. But long story short, it's been legal for years. So it's legal to have. It's legal to use. It's legal to, you know, do many things with it, but it's just not legal to buy or sell yet so again you know there's all these corrupt forces in the government just like the government in your country just like all over the place all over it's all about money all right but long story short even though it's legal for you to have to ingest to use to whatever um it's not legal to buy and sell and why is it not legal to buy and sell well because again the government agencies are all fighting over you know how much of a cut they're gonna get you know same as it ever was all right but hopefully with the new uh, president and the new government coming in, they'll finally, you know, kind of, you know, wrap that bad boy up and uh, allow people to buy and sell it just like alcohol, just like cigarettes, you know, just like, you know, cookies, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and, and it's funny because, look, out here in the Yucatan where I'm at, it's a lot more conservative. And uh, the people out here, they kind of keep it under wraps, you know, and they don't really, you know, put it out there. But when I was in Guadalajara, um, you know, I, I would walk around and I would smell it from time to time. Or in Oaxaca, you're getting off the plane and, uh, yeah, it, it, they're offering it to you. Same as Cancun. You know, it's everywhere. When you're in Mexico City, they, you know, certain areas and certain parks and, you know, in certain pub, uh, pub, what is it, public areas, you know, it's totally legal and safe and open and all that stuff so um you know all, all we can do now is wait and for anyone that knows anything about mexico everything takes forever here everything is slow as molasses all right so just you know um be patient all right that's all i got to say the reason i didn't talk about it this time around this year and i just kind of skipped 
and um, and I, you know, it's not on my mind, <clears throat> is because I stopped smoking that at the beginning of this year. Even though I was a major proponent to that, and I've been smoking that since you know over 20 years, I basically stopped smoking this year. Okay, and so therefore, you know, it's not really on my mind per se. Um. Mm, da, da, da. Okay, let me see. You have right says I can't stand force or papers or forcing papers I have to go without because it seems like everyone wants papers. I don't worry, rolling papers? What are you talking about? Should I be brave and buy a car and use it without papers to continue being scared? You know, the thing about you know, um, driving, you know, without license plates or papers or anything like that. All that has to do depending on the state in Mexico. In some states in Mexico, um, you can drive cars, you know, without any papers, you know, without a license, without a license plate, none of that. But in some states, you know, like where I live, yeah, you know what I mean? Like uh, out here uh, in the Yucatan, it's, it's similar to how it might be in the USA. Again, you know, they're not as uh, forceful you know, with uh, what they're requiring. But, you know, yes, you know, they would like it if you had a license. Yes, of course, they want you to register the car. Yes, of course, they want a, a uh, up-to-date and valid license plate and, and things like that. So it's up to you. You know what I mean? I would research, you know, what states in Mexico um, are less restrictive. And, uh, you know, obviously here in the Yucatan and other states are more restrictive when it comes to that. Um, not just papers for your car, but whatever papers. But look, as a totality, you know, in Mexico, um, they're not really asking for much, okay? Um, it's basically the way it works is like this. The more money you make or the more valuable XYZ is, the more they're going to require you to prove um, that you own it or that, you know, that it's yours or um, whatever it is, you know, and it's all for tax purposes only. Because, again, the biggest mafia of them all, the government, you know, just like every country, the biggest mafia of them all is always the government. They're they're going to want and require you to pay taxes one shape, form or another. OK, um, but it, it, again, you know, compared to the IRS, you know, compared to the USA and uh, and their tax code and the things that how they work over there, it's it's an almost a non issue out here. It's very, you know, easy breezy, you know, a cover girl out here. OK, so. Uh, King Marlin says, do I have any videos or know any content creators who have done videos on um, private schools? My wife, um, a Mexican national, and I might move to Mexico if, if politics in Canada. Well, um, the reality is, is that like I, I don't know because I don't have kids. And that's not really my department. But what I would suggest to you, which is what I suggest to everyone that asked me about that topic, is to go uh, into the Facebook groups you know, there are tons of Facebook groups of foreigners and expats um, out here in Mexico. Um, you know, basically every city, every region, every state has their groups. Um, I would ask there because uh, they, they talk about it a lot there. Um, it's a major topic of discussion. Obviously, there's a lot more people these days moving out here with families, with kids. And, um, you know, they all have different um, issues when it comes to putting their kids through school. You know, some people, you know, uh, some people out there, they'll just put their kids in public school. Um, some kids, you know, some parents want their kids in private school. Um, some people want to do, um, what you call it? Homeschooling. And so there's all kinds of options. Okay. And, um, it's up to you. And some people don't even want to put their kids in school at all. But long story short, the best option for you is to go into the Facebook groups and ask other parents, Okay, and the parents will let you know what works for them and uh, go by word of mouth, you know, as to what might be the best option for you and your kids. So, uh, da -da -da -da. Supercharged says, FYI, Mexico may soon have a new female president. Correct. So, there's three candidates for president in Mexico and the two main candidates are both female and the favorite is you know uh, basically the same exact um, party and kind of like the same kind of regime the same kind of uh, mentality as the former president so you know Mexico seen a lot of growth and a lot of change in the last six years with the last president and so a lot of people are expecting um, things to remain the same going forward uh after this election 
with the new president, which is uh, Scheinbaum, I think her name is. I don't know. I don't really follow politics too much. Not anymore. Not for a long time. So. Oh, Claudia Scheinbaum. There you go. Um, hey, Jose, according to Mexico Relocation Guide, Claudia Scheinbaum, if Claudia Scheinbaum wins the Mexican president, she will propose a significant increase in the minimum wage. That's great. That's awesome. You know, most Mexicans, uh, they want that because, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've heard, but most Mexicans, you know, for the longest time have not made a lot of money. In fact, you know, now a lot of manufacturing is leaving China because now China and Chinese people are making too much money. And so they're coming to Mexico uh, because the, the wages here are extremely suppressed, even though wages have doubled in the last six years with this new president. They're expecting to continue to grow. And we've talked about it multiple times here, you know, as the economy is getting better and growing and all that stuff. But T says um, that with the minimum wage increase, um, what that's going to cause is that it's going to cause, um, what is it like, uh, what is that? sorry, it's going to cause um, the financial requirements for you to get your residency to increase. Again, I've talked about this so much already, you know, it's like beating a dead horse. Oh, so, sorry, Lambo. Sorry. That's not funny. Yeah, sorry. Anyways, but I've talked about it so many times. OK, that it's already again, it's getting to the point where it's like, I don't understand why people don't listen. But I understand, you know, people are discovering my channel every single day more and more. So they might not know that. Well, guess what, guys? There's a bunch of ways to get residency. A lot of people out there, a lot of channels out there are basically letting you know that the only way to get residency is to meet financial requirements. That is not the only way, okay? There are multiple ways in which you can get your residency and uh, you don't have to meet any kind of financial requirements, okay? If you go through the Mexican consulate, okay, and you're looking to get your residency and you probably never stepped foot in Mexico, you're basically buying your residency. And so therefore, well, they're going to want to ask for financial requirements, but... If you've been to Mexico multiple times, if you've lived in Mexico, you know, AKA lived on a tourist visa, an FMM, if you, again, if you've been to Mexico, okay, or reside in Mexico currently, um, you will probably um, qualify for residency through the RNE program, okay? And this is one of the ways in which you can get residency. There's many ways you can get residency, but long story short, um, you can get residency. Okay, so you got nothing to worry about. Okay, so Steve says, is the RNE still in effect? Yes, it is. It's still in effect basically up until um, the beginning of next year. And as we talked about with Jose Novello last time he was here, um, Jose Novello is an immigration um, expert. He's a lawyer out here. He specializes in, you know, um, in taxes and uh, real estate and so many other um uh, which we call so many other topics when it comes to law, but long story short, he takes care of residency and immigration issues because, well, that's a main issue for a lot of people out there. So obviously he helps people with that and he's a lawyer, so he can really interpret the law, you know, as better than most people out there, especially for being a Mexican citizen that speaks Spanish and legalese. You know, I, I, you know, I would expect him to know a lot more about Mexican law than some gringo on YouTube that can barely speak Spanish. But that's not what we're talking about here. The point I'm making is that even if the RNE program is not renewed next year, which could happen, it happens. But even if the RNE program ceases to exist, listen, there is still a... Um, what you call there's still a law in the immigration law or what is it like a there's still a program sorry. there's still a program within the immigration law that basically says this okay every two to three years okay every two to three years they have a special program where they reach out to everyone in mexico that is living in mexico illegally or with an expired FMM, tourist visa, or whatever, okay? They're just in Mexico without any kind of residency, but they live here or live and work here, and 
they're looking to get residency. So this program that comes online every two to three years basically, you know, alerts everybody that is here without any kind of residency and lets them know, hey, do you want to renew? I'm oh, sorry. It's like it alerts everybody and lets them know, hey, do you want to get your residency? And if you do want to get your residency, all you got to do is report to immigration under that program. OK, and you basically get your residency now ever since COVID. OK, ever since COVID, that program was basically um, um, fast forwarded or, or not fast forwarded. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh you know, basically, like I said, that program was already in the books for years, um, but it was it would only come online every two to three years. OK, but during COVID, what they did is that they extended that program or they fast forwarded that program to do it every single year. So instead of waiting two to three years, now it's every year. And that is what the RNE program is. I know I'm all over the place, but I hope that makes sense. Okay. So what the RNE program really is, is that it is the yearly version of that already existing program that would only come online every couple of years, give or take. Okay. But long story short, that's just one of the ways in which you can get residency without meeting financial requirements. How I got residency without meeting financial requirements. Well, I got married. I got it through family structure. OK, um, you know, if you have a kid in Mexico, that's another way, you know, that you can get residency. So let's say that you are two um, Americans. OK, and one of you is pregnant and you have the kid in Mexico, an anchor baby. <laughs> but anyways, one of you guys has a kid out here in Mexico. Um, well, now that kid is automatically a Mexican citizen. And guess what? Now that the kid is a Mexican citizen, now you and, the, and your spouse both get Mexican residency through your child, through family structure. If you have, you know, any kind of Mexican heritage, okay, you also get residency. I mean, there's so many ways you can get residency, okay? I mean, you can get sponsored by a company. You know, let's say that, you know, you want to work for Oracle or Microsoft or Tesla or whatever. There's a gazillion companies, you know, in this country here. Um, and one of them can sponsor you and give and you can get resident through that way. I mean, there's many ways you can get residency, you know, so even so if you're retired, you're retired, you can also get residency um, by just proving that you're getting a, re, a, a what is it like a retirement check. Now, like I said, you know, there's many ways, OK, in which you can get residency. The fastest, quickest, easiest way besides family structure, OK, besides, you know, having family ties to Mexico is the RNE program, okay? So that's it, you know? Now, again, there's many of you guys that qualify to, uh, with, to get residency through, um, whatchamacallit, through uh, financial requirements. Well, go ahead and get it that way. Why not? It's easy, right? If, if you can, afford, if you can uh, prove that you make enough money. But for anyone else out there, okay, that is constantly thinking about you know, or stressing out about not being able to get residency because of the financial requirements. Stop stressing, okay? Stop stressing, all right? Do you know how many people that come from other countries, okay, that um, have, they don't even have their papers or their paperwork, and they come from really, really, really poor countries in Latin America or Asia or Africa, whatever, and they land here, okay, and they're able to get residency like that? So why wouldn't you be able to get residency? You know what I mean? As an American or a Canadian. So, um, but the thing is that you, the thing is that you, look, everyone out there, you know, a lot of you guys, you know, you're think you constantly think that you're an expat, okay? And that you are, you know, uh, entitled to a special treatment or that you're um, special. No, listen, listen. Everyone out there listening to me right now and everyone out there, period, is an immigrant. We're all immigrants, okay? So, OK, the thing that you have to now realize is that you are all immigrants coming into Mexico and immigrating into Mexico. So with that said, you have to follow the immigration process in order to get, you know, your immigrant status correct. You know, a.k.a. get residency, you know, temporary residency, permanent residency, whatever it is. So, it, it, you know, just like it's difficult to get residency in Canada or the USA as an immigrant from another country. What makes you think it's going to be easy for you? Now, if you want the easy way, then yeah, you can buy your way through it. You know, again, just prove that you're rich 
compared to another Mexican, okay, at the consulate, and they'll give you a residency. You know, the U.S. also sells passports, and they also sell residencies, believe it or not, okay? They sell citizenship to rich, you know, foreigners. So Mexico, just like every other country on earth, they also sell residencies and citizenships if you make enough money. And yes, as Mexico is becoming richer, you know, as the typical Mexican, okay, is making more money, well, then, yeah, their requirement's going to constantly increase. And the thing is, it's like not only is Mexico getting richer, but your country is getting poorer. Your currency is getting poorer. That's why you are looking to move to Mexico and you are now an immigrant. Okay? You're not an entitled expat. Okay? Moving out here um, to retire. Maybe 20 years ago. Okay? But not, not today. You know, now you're coming out here with like a, a thousand five hundred bucks, you know, social security check. You know, that's barely middle class in Mexico these days. So, you know, just keep that in mind, all right? So, I hope that makes a lot more sense. But, you know, again, you know, all this, believe it or not, does have to do with safety. Because as this country, you know, becomes richer, as there's a bigger middle class in this country, as this country of Mexico continues to get more economically powerful, well, guess what? You know what I mean? It's going to get safer. It has to get safer. If it's not safe, you know, it can't be an economic powerhouse. It's as simple as that. And when you understand who's really behind, you know, the economic uh, powerhouseness, you know, again, who's running the avocado farms, who's running the factories, who's running the financial sector, you know, again, it's 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 uh, the same people, you know, that they're telling you in the USA are the ones that are stealing your wallet. All right. They're not. So hope a lot of that makes a lot more sense. Um, all right. Let me see. Um, Sam says, can I get temporary residency in Mexico? Can I get a Mexican passport? No. The only way to get a Mexican passport is that you have to be a Mexican citizen, okay? And um, so that's something I've been inquiring on recently because I've already had my permanent residency, you know, for a while. I've already been in Mexico over five years. So one of the requirements that you need in order to become a, a citizen of Mexico is that you have to, at the very least, be residing in Mexico at least five years, okay? So I've already met that requirement. I've already met all the requirements in order to become a citizen. So now, in order for me to become a citizen, I got to go to another department. It has nothing to do with immigration, okay? Because I'm already here legally with permanent residency that lasts forever. But now my next step is that I want to become a national, okay? I want to be a Mexican citizen so that I can have my Mexican voting ID, my Mexican, you know, ID, my uh my mexican papers i'm a more but but that yeah, sorry is it that coffee strong right but more importantly than anything else what i really want is my mexican passport and the only way i can get a mexican passport is that i have to be a mexican citizen and in order to become a mexican citizen it is basically the same kind of situation as if you're trying to become a u.s citizen all right so you got to take a test you know you got to be fluent in spanish or at least speak spanish enough to take the test um you got to know mexican history you know just like if you're trying to become a u.s citizen they're going to ask you you know who is george washington you know <laughs> and they're going to ask you certain things about the usa um and its history same thing with mexico so you you know just be prepared for that and that you cannot necessarily buy a res a, a citizenship all right nobody all right that's rich enough to buy a citizenship is watching this video right now or watching my ass all right You've already bought it and you've already done your thing. <clears throat> so, you know, going back to the issue of safety in Mexico, you know, again, Mexico is extremely safe. It's getting safer and safer each and every day. Um, like I said, you know, we were just in Guadalajara, which is the second most populous and most important city and area in all of Mexico. And I felt extremely safe, you know, outside of just a few areas or spots, you know, there were, you know, a little shady and uh you know people are maybe maybe looking into doing some petty crime but again other than that you know what i mean uh, no way you know what i mean like compared to the usa where you can't even walk you know down any kind of street without getting harassed by you know a bum 
or a drug addict or some some person out there you know of uh uh what should we call it of um yeah sorry it's got a message there but anyways but you know you, you, there's a lot more danger in the usa these days okay so from my humble opinion all right and i think a lot of people that have been to the usa uh, i'm sorry that have been to mexico you guys immediately once you're in mexico you quickly realize how safe it is now again there mexico is a huge country and there are many areas of mexico that are dangerous just like in the usa you know there are many areas of the usa that are safe you know, not every area in the USA is completely dangerous, but the tables are turning like dramatically. All right. And um, in my opinion, I feel, I've always felt safe in Mexico. I've never you know, been in any kind of threat or, you know, in any kind of had any kind of feeling that something bad or negative was going to happen to me. When I first came to Mexico, obviously, you know, I'm an American. And so as an American, I was afraid of everything. Um, and when I came to Mexico, I was afraid of everything out here in Mexico. And as the years have gone on, and I've been in all kinds of shady, you know, uh, which one, neighborhoods out here, and all kinds of areas out here that might seem scary to the typical American, I've quickly realized that I got nothing to be scared of, you know, at all. Um, you know, outside of, again, maybe the threat of a little bit of petty crime um, that would happen in any major city or any major area in anywhere on the world. Um, but outside of that, never felt in danger for my life at all. In the USA, I was constantly feeling in danger of losing my life in one shape, form, or another. And again, it just might be me. You know, I know there's a lot of Americans out there that don't feel that way at all. You know, a lot of Americans that feel extremely safe and protected in the USA. But not everybody, you know. For me, I, no way. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've never felt safe in the USA, ever. You know, very rarely you know, I can count on one hand how many times I felt safe, okay, in the USA. But in Mexico, I've never, in fact, I've never felt in danger. Like I said, you know, I might be in certain areas where they might be a little shady and, you know, just, hey, be careful with your wallet. You know, be careful with your phone. You know, just, you know, things like that. You know, don't be carrying anything of value in certain areas. But never once, you know, have I ever felt um, in danger of my life. You know, again, I might be robbed of my phone or my wallet, but not, never of my life. Like I said, you know, you could be in the USA in a Walmart parking lot minding your own business and you could lose your life there by a million random things, okay? You know this, I know this, we all know this, all right? So that's never going to happen here, all right? You know, again, the only time you're ever going to, like, lose your life randomly out here in Mexico might be, you know, again, knock on wood, nothing happens, but, you know, a car accident, you know, or, you know, you trip and fall and you bust your head and that's it. You know, you know, just really random, horrible things that, you know, cannot get any more random. You know, you get struck by lightning, you know, whatever. <laughs> so. All right, let me see. By the way, so please, like I said, if you have any questions or comments or, or, or things that you want me to talk about or read, let me know. Um, so now that I have everyone's attention, you know, I want to give a big shout out to Jose Novello, you know, who we talked about a little earlier. He is, you know, our lawyer. OK, he's my really good friend. He happens to be a lawyer. He comes on the show on a regular basis. You know, he does videos with me on a regular basis where we talk about real estate, immigration, um, what, what else, taxes. You know, we talk about all kinds of things and we give you guys all the information you need to make the best decisions possible. And yes, of course, he's for hire. If you need him, you know, you can, you know, hire him, you know, to help you find a home, you know, to help you with any kind of legal matters. You know, let's say you need to set up a Fidel Comiso. You want to start up a corporation. Um, you want to, um, you know, get your immigration status correct. You know, you want to go through the r &E program, whatever. He's he's there to help. But um, at the very least, you know, he likes to come on the show, you know, just like I, you know, come on the show and i tell you guys all kinds of free information so that you guys can be as educated as possible on all these subjects so you can make the best decision possible um whether you're going to do this on your own or you want to hire somebody or whatever it is you want to do you know what to expect you know um you know what the real information is so nobody can take advantage of you and nobody can give you the run around or no or nobody can you know again you know tell you something that is not accurate 
you know, we try to give you the accurate info. And uh, again, you know, many times when we're talking about the r &E program or other immigration programs, or we're talking about laws, or we're talking, I like to bring up, you know, the actual, you know, law, you know, on screen, you know, the actual, um, what you might call it, uh, uh, immigration uh, law, I guess, or regulation, or rule of regulation, whatever it is. You know, I like to give you the actual information so that you guys can uh, can see it for yourself and you just don't, it's not just hearsay, all right? So, da -da -da. I'm glad that most of you guys in the comment section are letting me know about your experiences out here in Mexico and how safe you feel out here in Mexico. I really greatly appreciate that. Um, that helps not just, I mean, it's not really helping me, it's helping everyone else in the audience because, uh, you know, there's so many people that are watching from the US or Canada and uh well obviously you're tuning in because you want to know more information and there's you know there's only so much i can talk about you know i just i'm a guy i'm just a random guy with a fake talking horse <laughs> i'm not that fake i'm not fake at all anyways um you know so again you know you don't have to take me seriously but you know with the people in the chat you know which are one after the other after the other sharing your experiences in the comment section sharing your actual you know real life experience that helps a lot but as i was saying next week so, yeah, I know I interrupted myself. I know I'm the worst. But anyways, next week, okay, next Thursday, we're going to have Jose Novello, okay, on the show, all right? So, I know a lot of you guys really love it when he's on and, um, and he's answering your questions and we're talking about all the topics that you care about and uh, we have an actual expert, you know, to really discuss these things in detail or at the very least, you know, give you an overview of XYZ you know, situation. So, um, please, you know, tune in next week on Thursday, um, so that you can, uh, you know, ask him any questions that you might have, or you can listen in to, to him talk about, you know, immigration, R and E program, real estate taxes, um, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for that and then been waiting for his return. He's a very busy guy, just like me. He's obviously a lot more busy than I am. Because, uh, you know, he's a lawyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, but on top of that, um, you know, he likes to come on the show a lot. All right. He likes to really, you know, uh, you know, hang out with us live and uh, do the question and answer session and uh, do all that stuff. So one thing um, I do want to ask you guys, OK, that are going to tune in next week is that if you have any questions or topics that you want us to talk about, you want us to cover. Let me know down below in the comments, okay? Once this video, you know, pu is published, because remember, we're live right now. But, you know, once the live stream is over, it gets published to YouTube. So please, you know, go on ahead and leave me below down in the comments, okay? I'm going to read, you know, you know me. I read all the comments. I try to answer everybody there. Um, but please go on ahead and leave me any kind of questions or, or comments um, pertaining to questions and uh, topics that you want us to to talk about and discuss next week in next week's live stream where we have him on live and of course you know we're going to be taking your questions and uh talking to you guys in the audience live you know um about everything and anything so so please you know do not miss out on that opportunity it's again an opportunity that you guys have to talk to a mexican lawyer that is ex that is um fluent in english he speak he probably speaks better english than me all right. <laughs> so but the point is, is that, you know, he's uh, Mexican born and raised uh, practicing lawyer out here. His main bread and butter is, you know, other things is not immigration per se. Like I said, so he's he's an actual lawyer, lawyer um, that can answer your questions on very important topics. So please not don't not in the chat, because I'm not going to look at the chat later on. But l after this video is published in the comment section, leave again the topics and questions that you want us to talk about so that we can discuss them because you know obviously we're going to have i'm going to take some notes and i'm going to have you know a bunch of things that we're going to talk about you know while we're live but we're also going to be taking questions and doing a question and answer session you know uh, after you know we we talk or you know while we're talking okay so you know how we do we just hang we most of the time we're just hanging out talking about xyz you know, um, and sharing information and then t taking comments from you guys for anyone that's, you know, ever, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, joined in um, to any of the live streams I've done with him, okay? 
So. So let me see. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna read some. Co- so here, let me. Um, maybe I should put some music on. So that I can uh, read through the comment section real quick. By the way, look, check this out. I, I took some new footage. Not here, sorry. I took some new footage of the beach. I was at the beach a few months ago. And uh, we got some new beach footage, you know, to share with you guys. So hopefully you guys can enjoy that. Beautiful beach. You remember that, that uh, video I did not too long ago where I was walking on the beach talking about mental health? That's, that was the same day. I just set my camera up right there on the water. And uh, it's beautiful. I'm huh? very relaxing. So. So before we, um, I'm going to go into the comment section, but I want to do a little quick shameless plug out there. You know, shout out to everyone. But yeah, guys, you know, don't forget um, every single um, Thursday I'm here live doing a live stream of one shape, form or another. Next week, we got Jose Novello on. Okay, so we're going to be, again, answering all your questions. Okay, so that's Jose. Shout out to him. Jose and Jose. All right, we should start up a law firm, right? Jose and Jose. (laughs) Um, Again, if you want more free information on moving to Mexico, living in Mexico, or even moving to Merida, Yucatan, check out my website. You know, I got digital nomad jobs. I got, um, you know, if you want to do a personalized consultation with me, a one-on-one talk with me, you guys can, you know, again, go to the website and find all the information on how to reach out to me. Um, Like I said, free resources for living in Mexico. You know, everything from how to find the rental, what you need to know before renting. Um, You know, if you need a banking solution, if you need to get your apostle, if you need a a translator, you know, um, to help you speak Spanish, you know, while you're out here. Um, You know, lawyer services, digital nomad jobs. and, uh, And again, if you wanna learn how to speak Spanish for free and so on and so forth. So. Um, please check out my website. It's full of tons of free information. Okay, so not just my videos. You know, obviously I got tons of information in my videos and live streams, but also on my website, you know, tons of free information. And, you know, for anyone out there that enjoys my content, for anyone out there that enjoys my live streams and enjoys everything that is me, then please check out my new channel, Jose Unleashed. A little shameless plug. I'm going to put a link in the chat for anyone out there that's interested. But please, every single Thursday, as soon as I'm done with this live stream, I go on my other channel and I do another live stream. Okay. But this channel is just purely entertainment and we talk about all kinds of things. So, you know, last episode, we talked about that time I lived in Seattle. Um, Before that, we talked about when I worked at a strip club in Miami, that time I sunk a boat off the coast of Miami, the time I got thrown out of Disney. Um, we talk about random topics like, you know, uh, you know, why I became a cook, why Americans cannot cook, you know, and so on and so forth. And in today's episode, you know, later on today, we're going to we're going to talk about that time I worked at the zoo. Yeah, that's right. I worked at a zoo. All right. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that kind of content. Like I said, you know, I think if you guys enjoy, you know, me for entertainment purposes only, then I think you will definitely enjoy um, this channel. Um, where it's just me, you know, uh, trying to make you guys laugh by telling you guys stories about my life. I know, right? I don't know. I don't know if if that should be, I don't know if that's sad or depressing, but regardless, you know, at least, you know, um, you guys can laugh a little bit and enjoy, you know, uh, (laughs) you know, some of the, the parts of my life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right. So just again, shameless plug there, you know, so check out Jose Unleashed, check out my website, and uh, check out my YouTube page, you know, the same page that you're watching this live stream on um, for more information, okay, and more stuff, okay? So let me let me go and read the chat real quick. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out the chat. Again, if you guys have any questions or any topics that you want me to discuss at the moment, um, please let me know and uh, we'll talk about them before, you know, as we, you know, run this uh, show to the end here. Sorry, my English not so good sometimes. Um, let me 
me see comments. I'm just reading the chat real quick, okay? While you guys are listening to some music. Yeah, so, okay, it seems like one of the things you guys are talking about there in the chat is about uh, driving at night. So, look. The reason they don't, the, the, the reason that um, a lot of people out there, you know, uh, tell you to be careful when driving at night, a lot of it really just has to do because, okay, so in the USA, you know, there are police officers um, that are constantly on the roads with radar guns, um, basically threatening you by scaring you um, into thinking that they're out there in the bushes, you know, measuring your speed so that they can pull you over and stop you. And um, and what you might call it, and uh, give you a ticket, and uh, try to enforce, you know, the speed limit, the speed laws. But in Mexico, um, it's very rare to see anything like that. In fact, in Mexico, the way that they control speeding, and the way that they control um, traffic, and the way they control, you know, crazy driving and drivers, is through speed bumps. Yeah, that's right. So you're gonna find speed bumps in the most random places and if you're driving during during the day um many times you'll even miss the speed bump and you could hit that speed bump imagine hitting a speed bump at a very high rate of speed it's gonna wake you up okay at the very least but you know again it could damage your car it's definitely gonna you know um you know give you a a a jolt you know and definitely scare you to the point where it's gonna make you slow down but the real dangerous part is that when you're driving at night, you really won't be able to see these speed bumps. And if you're going, you know, at a high rate of speed and you hit a speed bump, a.k.a. a tope, that's what they're called. They're called topes out here. But anyways, a speed bump, um, then yeah, you know what I mean? It, it, you know, it, it's, it's going to cause massive damage to you, to your car, um, to your um, to your ego, you know, whatever. But long story short, that's how they kind of control speed and control um you know traffic and things like that out here is through speed bumps okay so one of the major dangers okay of driving in mexico at night especially is the speed bumps okay not just the speed bumps but depending on the part of mexico you're in there might be cows on the road there might be sheep on the road there might be people on the road and they're not well lit especially if you're out in the country as soon as you leave the city and you're out there uh, on these highways, you know, it's not like the USA where all the highways are very well lit in most par- in most places, in most areas. Out here, it's not like that at all. You know, most areas are not well lit. So you could just be out there in the, the middle of nowhere. And before you know it, you're hitting a guy on a bicycle, on a motorbike, you know, hitting a guy riding a horse, hit, hit a guy, um, you know, riding a cow or just a cow on their own. Uh, speed bumps, uh, what else, uh, you know, potholes, you know, potholes are a major thing as well, um, not all roads are paved, you know, correctly, so you're going to find speed bumps on top of uh, potholes, or potholes on top of speed bumps, or both, um, elevation changes, I could go on and on, okay, if you're driving in the mountains, you know, depending on where you're driving, you know, anyway, so there's, there's, the safety is more about you know, what you're going to find on the road. Now, of course, you know, there are certain areas of Mexico in which, like I was talking about earlier, they're not, it's not even the cartel per se. It's more about, you know, you're in certain parts of Mexico in the rural areas and there's no police, there's no authority, there's no nothing. And some of the village people, okay, I'm not talking about the, the YMCA, not those village people, you know, just village people, people that live in the Pueblos, um, it's their job to set up road blocks, road barriers, uh, tolls, you know, AKA tolls. And they're basically there, you know, to, you know, shake you down for a few bucks. Sometimes they might pose as authority. They might pose, okay, or um, identify themselves as police or authority figures when they're not. And they're looking to, you know, again, pull you over and rob you, okay? Um, and you're going to see more of that at night in certain areas not all areas very you know not as there's many areas where you're never going to see any of that at all but there's certain some areas you know in the in the middle of nowhere in very rural areas where you're most likely going to see these things so um it, oh, say el jefe says rock slides in the mountains you know rock slides are a major issue out here as well um and i could go on and on okay again if you're driving on the coast you could fall in the water you know so you know just be careful okay and so i at night 
you know, the major safety concern is all the environmental issues. Like I, like I was saying earlier, you know, rock slides, you know, potholes, cows, you know, people on bicycles, you know, there's, you know, all these random things that, you know, you're just not going to think of. Now, if you're driving in the middle of Kansas, all right, or in the middle of Nebraska, you're probably going to encounter the same thing. You know what I mean? You're probably going to encounter, you know, uh, some random animal, you know, some random thing, you know, um, whatever it is in the middle of nowhere, you know, outside of uh, major highways, okay? Uh, but even if you're driving through town, okay, again, many areas are not well lit. Um, there are potholes, you know, there are speed bumps, you know, there are a lot of things, you know, people. The main thing is people, you know, the, the, the one thing I see in the news a lot is uh, accidents, you know, whether it's traffic accidents, you know, just regular, you know, two cars hitting each other or a car hitting a bus or, you know, the worst are these tragic accidents where it's just a bunch of careless drivers that basically hit people on bicycles, on, on motorcycles, on tricycles, you know, all kinds of vehicles like that. Um, remember, a lot of people out here drive makeshift vehicles. You know, they basically even create their own vehicles. Um, and they might not be road worthy. Um, and, and, you know, when, it, when you're comparing it to U.S. standards of road worthiness, all right? Um, and so, obviously, you know, there's all kinds of vehicles and all kinds of people on the roads. And so, it's, you know, you got to be careful. You're not going to hit anybody or anything out there, okay? So... So, yeah, that's another thing, too. So Steve says, you know, if you break down in the desert or or in the dirt, eh, AAA isn't going to come to save you. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, so we, there isn't uh, AAA out here, but there are um, these things called the Green Angels. OK, Los Angeles Vedas. And, uh, you know, basically they're not AAA, but they are uh, a federal agency. There are basically like road warriors and they act like AAA um, and they're free and they're free. So long story short, you know, um, there is a thing called the Green Angels, Los Angeles Verdes, and you should look them up. But they're not in every part of Mexico, you know, um, and, and, and they don't work 24 hours a day. So you got to remember that. OK, so but but yeah, there is actually there is road help and road safety um, help out there um but it's not like in the usa there is no triple a um there is no 24-hour services you know in many places all right so but yeah for sure you know let's say you break down in the middle of the night in the middle of the desert or in the middle of the jungle you might have to wait until the next day or the next morning all right in order for you to get any kind of help all right so fyi just keep that in mind, all right? So, you know, the real danger of not of driving at night has a lot more to do with the environment than anything else. So, you know, it's best to drive during the day. If you got to do a long road trip or, you know, you got to travel on the road for a very long time, it's advisable to wake up extremely early and hit the road as early as possible, you know, as soon as the sun is coming up and just drive, you know, as much as you can um, until the sun goes down and then you know, park it for the night. So another thing is um, there's a lot of truck drivers. So the truck driving regulations in Mexico are not like in the USA and Canada. In fact, it's a free for all. So, you know, a lot of truck drivers are high on amphetamines or meth or, you know, drug of choice, you know, uh, in order to, you know, keep going because since there's no rules or regulations um, and they get paid on the cargo that they uh, travel with or what is it or, you know, they're able to move around, you know, think about it. You know, if you can drive for 48 hours straight, you know, on an eight ball, you know, they'll do it. You know, there's no rules or regulations really, you know, um, to stop them from doing it. So, you know, keep that in mind. You know, in fact, you know, truck drivers are here are a lot more dangerous than they are in the USA just simply because, you know, a lot of them are just high on some sort of amphetamine, you know, in order to keep them going so they can make that delivery as soon as possible. All right. So make sure of that. Be careful. All right. Be careful of all. If you see trucks on the road, just assume that they're under the influence of something. So just keep your distance and again, practice common sense and safety. Um, and you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. You know, it's not, you know, obviously, you know, there are many trucks on the road and, uh, you know, many people can function, 
um, no matter how many you know amphetamines or drugs they have in their bodies, all right. So just uh, just be aware of that. Um, that you know they, the, the reason that they might be a little aggressive or drive a little fast or whatever it is they're doing is because well they just need to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible to make that delivery so you can have your avocado toast. All right. So you know, shout out to them. So yeah, you know, again, the, the real danger on the road when it comes to other vehicles are trucks. Okay more than anything else so just keep an eye on that oh Dave, uh, daniel muñoz says los angeles verdes the green angels okay the ones that i was telling you about was uh, the federally funded um sorry the federally funded triple a service type thing whatever anyways um he says los angeles los angeles verdes only come on toll roads so don't be cheap and pay the toll so that's right so if you're going on you know other roads you know there remember there's plenty of roads in mexico just like in the usa you know we got the toll roads and then we got the no toll roads all right so the no toll roads you know they're those are the ones that are going to have the potholes they're not going to have the green angels um and they're a little bit more dangerous because they're publicly funded aka they're funded by you know the people in the area as opposed to the federally funded public toll roads okay which are constantly you know kind of uh being upkept and they have things like the green angels you know aka triple a and things like that which again you know they're not everywhere but these roads are everywhere the toll roads are all over mexico and um it is um you know for 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 many reasons you know it's it's a lot better for you to be driving on these roads um than the other roads you know if you're just taking a day trip to the beach then yeah you can just take whatever road out there but if you're driving longer distances you know across mexico it's it's you know it's um advisable okay very advisable to to drive on the toll roads okay so So, I'm gonna put a little more, more music on. Oh, by the way, um, Daniel Munoz, if you're listening, what is the number for uh, Los Angeles Vendors? Because I forgot what it was. Is it 611? So, basically, if you're driving on one of these roads and you need to call, the green angels i think you dial 611 but i don't know if that's the right number please if you know the number um let me know or you know what let me just google it so we got google right we got the technology all right see look see this is like the gov- mexican government page okay this is the all right, so look, see, Angeles Vedes, all right, Green Angels. All right, so they can assist you with all kinds of things. I'm trying to find out what's the number to call if you need them. Is it 078? I think it's 078. So if you're stuck out there in the middle of nowhere and you need them, not driving in the middle of nowhere, you could be in the city, okay? You could be in the middle of the city. You could be in, um, um, you know, on a highway, you know, one of these federally funded highways, toll roads. Um, all you got to do is do 078 on your cell phone and you will be in contact with them. So 078. Yeah, see, look. 078. All right. Thank you very much. So, that, yeah, anyway, so they're here to help you no matter what, okay? Okay, I guess these are the main roads where they're at. But, I mean, I, I don't know, anyways, but, yeah, I know they're all over the place. You guys can do more research on that on your own if you're thinking about driving through Mexico.
Uh, which is better, Puerto Vallarta or Yucatan? Uh, I don't know. I've never been to Puerto Vallarta yet. So, But they're two different areas. You know, the Yucatan is the Gulf of Mexico. Cancun is the Atlantic Caribbean Ocean. And uh, Puerto Vallarta is the Pacific Ocean. So they're all completely different. So... I'm just reading the comments real quick, guys. That's why I'm a little quiet. Give me a second here and see if there's any anything else here for me to talk about before I move on. I think that's it. Huh? Nothing else. But yeah, anyways, just you know, to wrap this bad boy up, guys. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, like I was saying, you know, I've I've always felt a lot safer out here in Mexico, even in dangerous areas. You know, I've been through. You know, I've been walking around Oaxaca. You know, at night like late at night um i've been walking around you know mexico city you know um all times of days again re in, in, in the regular um areas you know the downtown areas normal areas not in the the worst neighborhoods of oaxaca or the worst neighborhoods of mexico city i'm sure things are different there i'm just talking about the same neighborhoods that you're probably going to be in anyway all right so you know just walking around you know regular typical neighborhood in uh, in sorry not regular typical neighborhood but uh, oh yeah don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already thank you algorithm or ai you know for reminding me and reminding the audience to do so um but as i was saying you know most areas you know um again walking around downtown oaxaca at night without anyone on the streets um like two in the morning um no police no nothing felt very safe um, you know, walking around Mexico City at many hours, you know, uh, morning, daytime, nighttime, um, felt safe as well. Um, Gu Guadalajara, you know, walking at all times, you know, again, in, in, in many areas, you know, uh, touristy areas, not touristy areas, very safe. You know, the girls, you know, again, I went with Christian and her cousin. They were walking on their own as well, you know, in many spots, very safe, um, so, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, Merida, extremely safe, you know, crazy safe out here in Merida. Um, and, yeah, you know, where I can't really say the same for the USA. You know, in the USA, it's uh, it's hard to find a safe place where you can basically, you know, walk on your own without any kind of uh, danger lurking. So... D says, do I have uh, problems with scorpions or tarantulas coming into the house? Nope. Um, when I first moved to Merida, um, I went to a friend's house that lived on the outskirts of Merida, all the way out there, I think in like the Cal Cal area or some crap like that, all the way out there. And I saw a tarantula. I remember um, because, again, you know, they were like, oh, my God, there, you know, there's a spider in the bathroom. And I'm like, all right, yeah, no problem. You know, I went to the bathroom thinking it's just going to be a regular spider. And then when I went to the bathroom, it was a tarantula. But, you know, I, I just got a bucket. You know, I was able to, you know, get the tarantula in the bucket, went outside, put it outside the end. And I've seen maybe a couple scorpions. You know, again, out in the outskirts. But I live in the middle of the city. I live really close to Centro. Okay, I'm in Merida, but I live again really close to Centro. I have not seen any scorpions or tarantulas out here. Um, but, you know, there are all kinds of other bugs. You know, we are in the jungle. So we got flies and, and gnats and, uh, you know, small spiders, um, you know, worms or centipedes, millipedes, whatever you want to call them, cockroaches, you name it. You know what I mean? Everything, every bug you're going to be able to find in a... In a <laughs> you know, in some sort of jungle environment, you're going to find out here. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, big ants, small ants, medium ants, all kinds of ants, okay? If, if uh, you leave anything on, on the table, you know, you're going to have a swarm of baby tiny ants. Um, if you are growing something, you know, let's say, you know, we're growing some spinach. You know, if we don't put all kinds of protection around that spinach, you know, we have these giant leaf cutter ants that come and eat the spinach. So, you know, but again... You know, the, the tarantula, I mean, again, you know, it's not, they're not really dangerous. You know, I don't know. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I used to have, you know, friends that had tarantulas as pets. You know, by the way, these are the same ones that had, you know, snakes and iguanas or whatever as pets. OK, but yeah, no, I'm not. And then, you know, when it comes to scorpions, I feel like the, there's more danger with scorpions in the desert 
So in the north of Mexico, so if you're in the northern part of Mexico, in the desert areas, you know, um, like Baja, California, Sonora, whatever, you're going to find more scorpions in the desert than you are going to find them here. So um, so you, anyway, so one YouTuber in Medida was complaining about them. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of you know, YouTubers that all they do is complain about life out here in Mexico. You know, they're too Americanized to uh, get used to live out here or they, they've come from big cities or a different kind of lifestyle in the U.S. So when they come out here to Mexico, they're just not used to dealing with, uh, I don't know, everyday things that everyone else deals with. So, but yeah, you know, one thing you do have to be aware of is that, yeah, if you're moving to the jungle, there are going to be bugs in the jungle. Just like if you move to Florida or Texas, there are going to be bugs in, in those areas as well. So... But yeah, you know, at the end of the day, nothing to be scared of, okay? You don't have anything to be scared of, all right, when it comes to, uh, you know, bugs, you know, tarantulas or scorpions. Now, again, the more rural you are, you know, the further away from the city you are, the more likely you're going to maybe encounter those things, but not in the middle of the city. That's for sure. So... So, but yeah, uh, yeah, so out here in the Yucatan, it is extremely hot. You know, it's like 110 degrees out there right now. So it's just as hot as the desert. But, you know, you look at the beautiful beach. Look at this. This is, you know, like a half an hour, 45 minutes from my house. So it gets too hot. You can just jump in the water. So, man. It's fine. I like, you know, the heat is good. You know, so if you got the water close by, it's good. Because, you know, if the weather's too nice, you know, too cool, it's not necessarily beach weather, you know? That's why when I lived in California or, you know, on the West Coast, I, I never went to the beach, you know? I never went in the water on the beach because it's so freezing cold. I'm sure that the water's different in Puerto Vallarta. I'm sure it's warmer over there. But I don't think it's warmer than it is over here. I sincerely doubt that Puerto Vallarta is hotter than, than the Yucatan. The Yucatan, a.k.a., you know, everywhere from Cancun to Merida and, you know, all this, this whole area, this whole peninsula here. Um, you know, Tulum, Baclarar, you know, whatever, you know, the whole area here. Um, it's very hot. It's a Caribbean, okay? Just like if you're going to Cuba or Jamaica or, you know, anywhere else in the Caribbean, okay? It's hot. All right, so it's, it's it's same as Florida. You know, Florida's very hot. So, uh, but I think that's it, guys. I think we're gonna start, you know, wrapping this bad boy up. I think we've uh, talked about everything we need to talk about when it comes to safety and. You know a bunch of other topics so i really hope you guys enjoyed uh you know today's live stream today's video um for anyone out there that wants to continue um having fun with me you know wants to continue uh you know hanging out with me you know uh today during a live stream please check out my other channel okay jose unleashed okay i'm gonna be going live in a little while over there um we're gonna be talking about that time i worked at the zoo all right so that's coming up next. That's coming up in about 30 minutes. Okay. So again, I'm going to put the direct link to this video. Oh, look at that. Shout out to Megan with the $20 super chat. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hold on. We're looking for the, the sound effects here. You know, I, I used to use the sound effects a lot more. All right. So. Thank you so much, Zagan, Megan. Me sorry, I, I put both your names, you know, your name, your first name and your last name together. Sorry about that. Anyways, Megan Zopf. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the $20 super chat. And I, by the way, now that I'm, you know, thanking Megan, I'm also going to be thanking every single one of you guys out there that has sent me um, anything. You know, whether it's $1 or $20 or whatever dollars, um, whether you support me as a member of the channel, 
you know shout out to all the members out there you know shout out to all the patrons on patreon shout out to everyone that's bought me a coffee and uh, just shout out to everyone you know they, whether you're buying a t-shirt or whatever however you want to support the show even if all you do is watch the video or leave a like you know don't forget to you know again leave a like if you're enjoying this content enjoying this channel um thanks again you know for everyone out there um that shares my videos um, that leaves a comment down below, um, you know, hangs out with me during these live streams um, and so on and so forth. I really, really, really appreciate you guys. Um, everything helps. Every single thing that you guys do helps. If you watch an ad, if you cannot afford to do anything except for watch an ad and that's how you want to help support the show, that helps a lot. Now, again, whenever anyone watches an ad, I don't get that much money. Obviously, I probably get like a penny for every ad that you watch. It's not the point. The point is, is that, remember, YouTube is a business. So if YouTube sees that you guys are watching my videos and you guys are watching ads during my videos, well, guess what? You know, it, it sees that as a positive sign and, and it wants to recommend my channel and my videos to more people. Therefore, the channel keeps growing and I get to keep doing this and, uh, you know, well, you know, again, it's a great way to support the show is by watching the ads, believe it or not. Not, not necessarily because I'm getting a lot of money from them, but just simply because, well, YouTube definitely, you know, is uh, happy when people watch the ads and it just gives them even more incentive to recommend my channel, my content to the rest of YouTube, the rest of you guys out there. There's so many people out there that uh, have not discovered me yet. You know, a lot of times, that's why I like to, you know, talk about, you know, a lot of these topics and repeat myself, believe it or not. It's not because I like to hear my own voice, <laughs> even though some might argue that um, it's a lot of it has to do with the fact that, well, you know, there's so many people out there that have to just not heard any of uh, my content or heard anything I have to say or discover me or watch me or anything. And every single time I do a live stream, you know, we get more and more people out here. So. You know, again, that's another sign that, you know, there's more and more people that have yet to discover me or find me. And I want to give a shout out to everyone out there. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys, you know, um, and shout out a special big monster shout out to Megan for the $20 super chat. Thank you so much. Um, she says, hope you can buy a beer. I can buy a 24 pack with that. OK, so thank you very much. OK, I can buy like about 24 beers and get drunk off my ass off of the the twenty dollars so thank you megan i appreciate it i can buy myself in fact that's gonna buy me a bottle of jameson so thank you very much that twenty dollars is gonna buy me a bottle of jameson i like to drink my whiskey when i do have a libation or two so thank you megan i appreciate it um lr says i've heard many that is safe because the police only hire locals is that true i don't know who they hire but the police out here um they're not as corrupt as police in other parts of Mexico. Now, again, look, when I was in Guadalajara, the police were even better, in my opinion, than they were here. But what I'm trying to say is that in some parts of Mexico, like if you're in the middle of Mexico City, if you're in rural areas, you know, in the middle of nowhere in Mexico, um, the police might stop you and shake you down for a bribe for a few bucks whatever again they're not gonna arrest you they're not gonna you know harass you or kill you like they do in the usa now you know they're just looking to begin highway robbery you know in a sense and so you know you don't have to worry about you know uh, bad hombres out there you know trying to steal your wallet or steal your phone um a lot of times you know you gotta worry more about the police in certain areas that are looking to stop you you know again for whatever frivolous thing and using that as an excuse to Again, shake you down for a few bucks, meaning, you know, they'll say, hey, we know that you have a broken tail out or, hey, you know, we know that you committed X, Y, Z crime like speeding or whatever. But look, you know, we're going to do you a favor so that we don't have to give you a ticket and that you don't have to go to the court, you know, to pay the ticket, to pay the citation. You can just pay me right here, right now in cash and we can just forget about it. So that's how they try to bribe you. So in a place like Merida, you're not going to see that. I, I think I've told you guys where I've gotten pulled over before, you know, and uh, for not wearing my seatbelt, because again, you guys have seen my truck, okay? You know, it's, it barely has, you know, uh, seats to begin with. You know, it's, it's a really old truck I'm trying to fix up. But anyways, long, what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, obviously my seatbelt aren't working as, uh, you know, a new car would, you know, would. And so 
they pulled me over for my seatbelt not working and I thought that I was gonna you know encounter a situation in which I was gonna have to do you know uh, the song and dance with the bribe but no they actually just gave me a ticket okay and I had to go pay the ticket all right, so that's it. So, so long story short, the police in, in Merida, like the police in, in certain cities like Guadalajara and other parts of Mexico, you know, they're going to be real police. Um, but again, you know, they're public servants, you know, so, you know, they're, they're giving you a ticket or they're helping you along. A lot of times a police, by the way, shout out to O with a $10 super chat. So I want to give a big shout out to him as well. Him, her, them, letter, O. I don't know what you identify. You identify as a letter of the alphabet, right? O. Okay, anyway, shout out to O. Thank you. Um, what was I going to say? But anyway, so yeah, long story short, um, you know, most police in Mexico, let's say that you commit an infraction, okay? You know, let's say that uh, you uh, make a, a right turn when you weren't supposed to make a right turn or, you know, you get too much into the other lane or you do any kind of stupid, you know, traffic infraction that you know you shouldn't have done or you, it was a mistake. A lot of times the police are just basically going to flag you down and wave you down, not not pull you over, but they're just going to kind of let you know, hey, hey, be careful when you're driving. Hey, hey, you can't make a right turn there. Hey, you're going the wrong way. That's it. Or the, if they do pull you over, they're also going to just tell you the same thing, you know, just give you a warning. They're like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Yada, yada, yada. Now, one thing I do want to stress and I do want to talk about because it is the truth. If you are Mexican, okay, um, you are more likely to get harassed by the police than if you are a gringo, okay, or a foreigner or an immigrant, okay, for many reasons, okay. Um, but the reality is, is that, yeah, the, the more Mexican you are, the more likely you're going to be getting a... Uh, you know, a little bit more harassment from the police than anyone else. But the reality is, is that, again, the harassment out here is nothing. It pales in comparison to the harassment that you get from authority in the USA. You know, to me, you know, as as a child of Cuban parents, but both my parents came from communist Cuba, you know, just basically seeing uh, what the U.S. has turned into and the, the authority in the U.S. has turned into, is is sickening to say the least it's turned into a, a dystopian tyranny and uh you're not gonna see any of that here you know out here it's just like imagine you know if you're old enough you know to imagine what the police used to be in the usa 50 years ago that's what the police are out here for the most part okay you're gonna find police you know acting like normal citizens for them for the most part and they're just over glorified uh you know um security um age what's the word i'm looking for uh you know what, what's it like you know just private security okay that's all they are in fact in some places you're gonna you're gonna see that they're gonna have private security on top of the police you know like in guadalajara that in some of the fancy neighborhoods i noticed that they also had you know uh private security services okay besides the police presence so again even more safe than you can imagine all right so um, let me see. But anyway, shout out to O uh, for the ten dollars super chat. Shout out to Megan for the twenty dollars super chat. Thank you both very, very much. Um, now I can buy my bottle of Jameson and a twelve pack of beer. So thank you both. All right. Now I can get really drunk. All right. So thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> um. Uh, LR says, is, is it true Merida has more monitored traffic cameras than any other major city except London, therefore preventing petty crimes and discouraging? I, eh, no, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, no. You know what I mean? Are, are you kidding me? I come from the USA where they got cameras everywhere. And sure, there are cameras here, you know, and, and there, are, there have been more cameras put in place in the last six years since I've been here. Um... You know, you know, as time gone has gone on, there's been more cameras, but no way. You know what I mean? Like, just go to any city USA, and you're gonna see there there the traffic cameras everywhere, and there's all kinds of cameras all over the place, and you're not gonna find anything even remotely close um, to the amount of camera coverage, okay, 
in uh, you know in the USA um, that you're gonna find here. In fact, I would argue there's way more cameras in a place like uh, Guadalajara. So, and another thing I learned is a lot of these cameras are not even hooked up. Okay, they're just there for show. All right, so you know how like some businesses or some people might have a camera, you know, set up outside and it's not really connected to anybody, but it's just, uh, it's just you know, there to deter, you know, petty crime. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of it is that too. Because the thing is, it's like sometimes, you know, certain crimes or traffic violations or traffic accidents happen in an area with cameras and, uh, you know, there's no camera footage. And, well, it's because it wasn't connected to anything. So, you know, keep that in mind as well, okay? So, oh, shout out to Chef Boy with a $10 super chat. Oh, man, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> Chef Boy with a $10 super chat. Thank you very much. And Raul Gonzalez with, uh, again, $5 super chat. So, now I'm going to be able to buy a bottle of Jameson, buy a 12-pack, and buy tacos for me and my wife and uh, and for Gizmo. You know, Gizmo likes tacos as well. So, now I got now I got the whole shebang and dessert. I'm definitely gonna be able to buy some dessert, you know, from the the bread guy that shows up. You know what I mean? You know, whenever you hear like that guy in the neighborhood with like honk 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 honk, make sure to stop him. Okay, they got sweet breads. You know, got a bunch of pastries and a bunch of Mexican sweets. Um, so now I'm gonna be able to buy again bottle of Jameson, a 12 pack. Oh, don't forget to hit the like. All right. Anyways, a bottle of Jameson, 12 pack tacos, bread, and uh, you know, maybe a blunt. But anyways, I show shout out to everyone out there. Thank you very much. All right. You know, now we're now we're cooking. Now we're talking. So yeah, when it rains, it pours. Thank you so much, all of you guys. I really appreciate it. Um let me see. Uh any comments here? Let me play a little music while we wait. But again, guys, please join me on my other channel. We're going to go live there in a little while. All right. Um, I, I need to take at least 30 minute break in between streams. So I know we're going long on this one because of the super chats. So thank you very much. You know, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure, you know, I want to give a big thank you to all of you guys out there for all the love and support. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, but I do need to take a little break before we go talk about the zoo and by the way you know i hope if you guys have tuned in to jose unleashed you know uh i know i hate speaking in the third person but anyways if you guys have ever tuned into my other channel you guys uh will see um that i like to talk about all kinds of things all right on that channel so uh you know and uh, it's it's very fun a lot of it has to do you know with my own life experiences and um you know all the craziness that uh you know i've lived through um, so, you know, it's funny because sometimes I remember when I was working at the zoo, it was not necessarily my proudest moment, but you know, now here, you know, so many years later, I get to, um, you know, share with you guys, you know, uh, and look back on that point in my life and laugh and, uh, share with you guys that, uh, that experience. So hold on, let me go on ahead and change the time on that real quick here. I need to add some extra time. Anyways, I want to give a shout out to everyone out there. Thank you so much, you know, for joining me today. Um, I'm so happy to see so many people um, joining me here for, for these live streams. It seems like every single live stream, we get more and more people out here. So I really, 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 really appreciate that. It makes me happy to see you guys are interested in uh, the content that I provide. It really does... Uh, you know, help me continue rocking and rolling, man. You know, I got like a, a new Bluetooth uh, keyboard not too long ago. And geez, man, it is so annoying sometimes, you know, when it's not connected. It just disconnects on its own. But whatever, it is what it is. So let me see. All right, so I had to push back the time on that so I can see you guys in a little bit. That's right. So I, can't, I, I need my 30 minute break so I can get my uh, my bottle and my tacos. Um, actually, my bottle's coming through Amazon. All right. So I get my bottle of Jameson delivered by Amazon. <laughs> Shout out to Amazon. 
Uh, of, um, JD Vision says, of course Merida is hot. Megan, haven't you seen Jose sweating all the time? That's right. I'm, I'm sweating right now. I got the AC on and I'm sweating right now. I'm glistening, as, a, as the girls like to say. You know, girls, women don't sweat, right? They just glisten. All right. So, so yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's hot. It's hot. All right. So, see, look, that's one thing I liked about Guadalajara is that we were walking for hours on end and barely breaking a sweat. Okay. And it was like 90 degrees. Okay. Because it was hot. And, uh, you know, they're going through a little bit of a heat wave. And it's funny because, you know, they're going through a heat wave in Guadalajara to us, you know, from Merida. That was like, this is nice. This is like nice winter weather. What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> So yeah, no, for sure, you know, Merida is hot, man. And I know, I know I'm from Florida and Florida's crazy hot, but you know, I'm starting to really think that it's a lot hotter out here in this part of the world than it is in Florida. So just be prepared, you know, for heat, okay? But again, you got the beach right there, okay? So, you know, one thing about living in the Caribbean, one thing about living in paradise, one one thing about having this as your background, that beach, is that it has to be hot. Uh, you know, it's just you're not going to get this kind of, uh, you know, beach weather, you know, without the heat. One goes with the other, all right? You know, just like if you want to go skiing in the mountains, it has to be cold, you know? It is what it is, so... So... 72 in Sarasota. Yeah, definitely not as hot. You know, are you kidding me? It's like 110 degrees. In fact, I'm going to do a quick little weather check to see how hot it is right now. All right, look at this. Here, I'll, I'll show you guys so you guys can see I'm not playing around. Look at this. 100. And I, I think it's hotter than that right now, to tell you the truth. Okay, it says 100. Feels like 101. But it's 100 degrees, okay? Right now. Okay, so FYI. So... Anyways, with that being said, guys, I think it's time to wrap this bad boy up, all right? And um, I hope to see you guys and Jose Unleashed. I'm gonna put a uh, sorry, I'm gonna put a link here in the chat so you guys can join me there once we're done here. And uh, like I said, I'll be there at you know in 30 minutes, literally in 20 in 30 minutes. Okay, so 30 minutes from now, I'm gonna be over there, and we're gonna be talking about you know uh, the time that I was at the zoo. Yeah, that's right. By the way, I mean, you don't know, but that, that was me. That's a picture of me in the background. You see that gorilla? That was me. Okay? That was me at the zoo with my animal friends. All right? So, all right, guys. You already know the deal. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit the bell icon. But more importantly than anything else, please stay awesome. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you guys here on Sunday and Thursday. And sometimes on Tuesday, okay? I'm, I'm trying to see if I can drop an extra video every single week here. Um, so, you know, bear with me. And, uh, you know, hope you guys are enjoying the content in the video so far and everything we're doing here. So, love you guys. And I'll see you guys in 30 minutes on the other channel. And if not, I'll see you here next week, okay? Remember, we got Jose Novello, all right? Let's not forget. We got Jose Novello coming in next Thursday. So, next Thursday, we are going to be... Uh, doing a live stream at night, okay? So it's going to be um, a nighttime stream because remember, he's working as a lawyer. So he's coming straight from the office over here to the house so we can do the live stream, okay? So it's going to be a late live stream, okay? So anyways, love you guys. Peace out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.